Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created for Phaser 3. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. Alright, so now we know our logic's working, but what we're going to do is after our monsters attack, we're going to go ahead and check to see if one of them's fainted, and if they are, we'll display some different messages. Uh, so if the active enemy monster faints, uh, we'd say the wild monster has fainted, you gain some experience, and then later on we could add in experience functionality to level up our monsters, uh, versus if our player monster faints, uh, we would say if you have no more monsters, you need to escape. If you do have monsters, we'd transition to where you would switch and choose your next active monster. And so for that logic, what we'll do is we'll come to our battle scene. We'll come to the bottom. And so after our enemy attacks, we're currently showing our main battle menu. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new method. And this is where we're gonna actually check that uh, sequence. So we're gonna add a private method. We're gonna call it post battle sequence check. And what we'll do here, this is where we're going to call our show main battle menu if no one's fainted. Otherwise, we're going to call this method from our enemy attack. And then we'll go ahead and fix our reference. There we go. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the enemy monster is fainted. So we're going to do active enemy monster is fainted. And if the enemy monster has fainted, what we're going to do is let's copy this logic here and paste this here. And then so for our callback, let's just add a to do real quick. And now for our messages, what we'll do is we're going to say wild enemy name and we'll say fainted. Then we're just going to have a simple message that says, hey, you've gained some experience for the time being. So we'll go ahead and add our string. We'll say you have gained some experience. And then like I said, later on, we can go ahead and enhance this uh, with that actual functionality. So if our monster faints, what we actually want to do is we're going to go ahead and restart our phaser scene. Uh, later on, what we would do is we transition back to our world map. And so this is in the world scene. The player will continue their adventure. Uh, so they would continue moving around in the world. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a new private method. And so we're going to call this transition to next scene. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a simple fade out effect. So we're going to do this, we're going to do our cameras, and we're going to do our main camera, and we're going to do a fade out. And then we'll go ahead and specify a duration. Um, so out of the box, the uh, Phaser uh, 3 framework, um, the cameras, they come with a number of fade effects that you can apply uh, directly to your camera. And these fade effects, they allow you to specify like how long you want the fade to affect for, how long you want the fade to last for. And they can also specify the hue that you want the camera to uh, fade to. Um, and you do that by specifying your red, green, and blue. Um, and so... And this is how we can have our camera like fade to black. So that way it's a nice smooth transition. We go to our next scene instead of being a little bit jarring. Uh, so what we'll do is we're just going to say 600 milliseconds and we're going to do zero, zero, zero. So that way we fade to black. And then what we'll do is we're going to do cameras dot main. And we'll do once. And we're going to do phaser cameras. Scene 2D, we'll have our events, and we want our fade out complete event. And inside here, we'll specify a callback, and we'll do this, scene dot start, and we'll do scene keys, and we'll do our battle scene. All right, so what we just did here is we added a simple fade effect to our camera, um, so that way we fade to black. Then what we did is we registered an event listener to our camera. And so we can listen for particular fade events on our camera. So like when a fade out completes, when a fade out starts, and then we can trigger a callback function that we want to run when this event is triggered. And so what we're doing is we're waiting for our fade out to be fully completed. And once it's done, Phaser is going to emit an event that we can capture 
All right, and then so scene.start, what it's going to do is going to shut down our current scene, and it's going to start the scene that we provide. Uh, so it's going to be our battle scene. Uh, so we could just restart the current scene, uh, but later on we'll be transitioning to another scene, so we're just going to go ahead and stay with the start method. Uh, so to see an example of this, what we'll go ahead and do is let's go to our create method, and at the very bottom, we're going to go ahead and call our new method. So we'll call transition to next scene, go ahead and save, You'll see when our scene just starts, we start fading to black, and it's very fast because we only did 600 milliseconds, but if we change this to something like 2600, it's a slower fade out effect, and it's just a nice transition. Because um, then what we can do is on the scene that we're going to, we could add a fade in effect. All right, so let's go ahead and remove that logic from our create method. And then what we'll do is back down in our post battle sequence check. This is where we're going to call that method. So we're going to do this and then our new private method. We'll go ahead and save. Now what we want to do is we need to also check to see if our player has fainted. So what we actually want to do is we're going to go ahead and return. And so that way we don't invoke the logic after our if statement. And so we're just going to copy that, paste it. And let's go ahead and update our reference to active player monster. We'll check if our player monster is fainted. And we'll say, instead of wild, we'll just say our monster's name. So we're going to do our active player monster fainted. And we'll change our message for the time being to you have no more monsters escaping to safety. And then we'd also transition to our next scene, otherwise we return. All right, and then so later on, what we'll do is we'd actually replace this with logic to check if we actually have more monsters and then display an appropriate uh, message. All right, so to go ahead and test, what we're going to do is we'll come into our monster metadata. Uh, let's go ahead and update our active player's attack value to go ahead and be 25. And so if we come over to our scene, let's go ahead and test our fight logic. So we'll go ahead and use slash. Oh, so it looks like when I attacked, it didn't knock out the monster. So let's go ahead and check where we're passing in our data for when we attack. Ah, yes, yeah, so when we take damage. Uh, so we need to do this, and we need to reference our active enemy monster, and we'll do our base attack value. And then likewise, we need to do that for when our player attacks. So we'll do active player monster. And that we have the right value. All right, so now if we test again, if we fight, we'll see we should do 25 damage to Carno Dusk. The foe goes ahead and attacks, and then the foe faints. We've gained some experience, and then we go ahead and switch back to our scene. And so, what we'd actually want to do is before our enemy attacks, we should go ahead and check to see if they're fainted. Uh, so, if this active enemy monster is fainted, we don't want to run our logic before, so we're going to, we don't want to run the logic down below, so we're going to go ahead and return, and let's go ahead and call our post battle sequence. So now if we go ahead and test again, let's go ahead and fight. Let's see, we knock out the monster, we say they fainted, we've gained some experience. All right, so if we come up to our data, let's go ahead and change it so our enemy monster is going to knock us out. Go ahead and test that. So if we use Slash, we do some damage, they use Ice Shard, we get knocked out, we faint, and we have the right message. All right, so real quick, what we're going to do is we're going to refactor our logic for where we're looking up our cache and we're trying to find our monster attack. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a new utils file for handling our data. Um, so as our game continues to get larger, we're going to have other JSON files that we need to load. And so we're going to keep all this logic in one place. Uh, so you can imagine for like our monsters, we'd have a JSON file for our various monsters. Uh, we could have a JSON file for the various items that are available in the game. Uh, maybe which areas of our game monsters will appear in and things like that. And so what we'll do is if we jump over to our code, uh, let's go ahead and go into our utils file, utils folder. Let's add a new file and we're gonna call this data utils.js. And what we'll do is we're just gonna export out a class and we're gonna do data utils. 
And we're going to go ahead and add a static method. And so by adding a static method allows us to invoke it on our class without creating an instance of our class. And so we're going to call this get monster attack. And so for this method, we're going to expect our phaser scene as well as the attack ID that we need to look up. And then what we'll do is in our battle monster class, we're going to go ahead and copy this logic here. We'll paste that in our data utils. And fix our reference. And then so instead of restoring this dot scene, we're going to say scene. And we need to go ahead and import our data asset keys. And then what we need to do is we need to do this logic here. So we're going to copy this. And we're just going to go ahead and return that. All right. And then what we're going to do is we go ahead and save. Come back to our battle monster class. We're going to go ahead and call our method. So inside our for loop, what we'll do is we'll do const monster attack will be equal to our data utils dot get monster attack. We'll pass in our phaser scene and our attack ID that we're currently looking at. And we'll keep our same logic for our if statement. And then what we should be able to do is let's go ahead and get rid of this const here. And we'll go ahead and save. And let's go ahead and clean up our imports. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. In our next video, we're going to start working on our battle state machine. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go over what a finite state machine is, and we'll go over the states that we want to use for our state machine. And so now that we start to add in some of our logic for our player and enemy monsters attacking, you see our logic is getting more and more complicated. And so by introducing a state machine, we can abstract some of this logic away and make it easier to track what is happening during the battle. Because uh, as we start to add in more functions, functionality like switching between monsters items fleeing uh, there's gonna be a bunch of more new code introduced and so by using the state machine it'll be a great way to help organize our code um, so as a reminder there is a link in the description of the video to the complete source code for this video and as always thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the content if you did enjoy the video please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released uh, for more great phaser 3 content please see some of the links on your screen now